Hi everyone, Alba here. This is going to be my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 13 heroic quest, Mired in Kobolds, on the Elite difficulty. Enjoy. Hi everyone, Wardrak here. Quest Giver is located in the 12, right next to the entrance to the quest. The premise of this quest is pretty straightforward. Basically, walk in a straight line, defeat a bunch of kobolds, and then you've got a big boss fight. This is one of the classic free-to-play quests, and I don't think that many people run it these days because the XP is not great, but actually happens to be a very useful quest. Yeah, other than just the end fight, that's pretty cool, you'll see soon. Also, every time I come up with a new design for a build, I try to check it out by using one of the iconic heroes that I own and make some version of the build. And then my check is if I can run it solo on normal. If I can complete this quest, so then I'll call it viable. So, this is kind of my testing ground when it comes to the viability of a solo player. Anyways, back to Wardjack. Yeah, this area over here, if you want to get on top, you can just go around the back and climb up those stairs. You don't have to try to climb up, but you can also get up from the front, that, that was my point. of this quest is these big crystals. Here it's showing you that that crystal puts up the barrier. Breaking the crystal will take down the barrier. Also you can see when you break the crystal it stuns anything who's standing next to it. This is a stun that you cannot avoid. Also these spikes that I just walk through part of the quest object part of, sorry part of the quest theme they're like thorns anytime you step into thorns uh, you have to take a reflex save here I broke the crystal and I was stunned also and even using harper pin doesn't get you out of it you have to wait out the stun basically you should try to break them all in ranged if you don't want to get stunned We I love this. Whoever was making the code for this quest was having a real laugh when he did it. Okay, here there's like a side quest objective. You don't have to do this. Um, the quest, if you look at the map, goes from left to right, or from west to east, and this area goes down, so south. It's just a one-way side objective. You go to the end and come back. So if you're just trying to run to the end, you don't have to go here. It also looks like it's out of the way because it's like a smaller entrance you have to break through.
been trying to climb up so I can jump across and get to those two kobolds next to the crystal. try from this side. It's very slippery, it's very easy to fall. Anyways, let's keep on with the objective first. This NPC is the same one who gives you the Shantukar quest chain. So if you go to the market, at the bottom over there, next to the tavern, you'll find this quest giver. Here you need a rescuer. I think you should give up on this. You're just wasting everybody's time. I can't give up on this. You got these two guys over here. I need to kill them. And uh, my ranged attack is very wimpy. And they can fully heal themselves up in a second. So my DPS isn't good enough. Well, maybe, maybe you should try the other side and just go up on the center part. Not trying to get up all the way on the spikes. There you go. Yeah, thanks. Anyways, here this crystal is not breakable. And to lower this barrier, it's like a red wall, you see? Click on it, and it lowers it. And you got these two chests behind it. Effectively, it's just a door. You can click on it again and close it. But you can't break that crystal. It's not because of a bad angle or something. You saw a second ago, I was standing there and it didn't break. Anyways, we're done with this area. We can head back out. You notice every time I walk through those thorns, I have to throw a save. Here we go, now we're back on track. This end fight and this quest can be really, really tough. And one of the ways to deal with it is you can use Dimension Door or D Door and call yourself out of the end fight and run back to a shrine. Now there's two shrines and one over there I didn't use, so technically speaking I could come back out and use it. Here you have to shoot through this hole if you want to get the, those uh, that crystal. If you don't have a ranged weapon here, game gives you a bow and arrow if you need it.
gotta go deal with those few kobolds up on top. Luckily, none of them are shamans, they can't heal themselves, so slowly but surely I'll get rid of all of them. I'm trying to be careful not to smash these crystals. I don't want to get stung. Anyways, here we can see our boss. The end fight. They've got the small dragon that they're using these crystals to control. Once you break the crystals, it gets its control back. Anyways, if you've been enjoying this video so far, please hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it very much. It helps out the channel. It's doing very good, and it's all thanks to you guys. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna buff up for the end fight. I mentioned before, we left the first shrine, so technically speaking, if you run out of spell points, hit points, whatever, charges and stuff, you could use the Dimension Door, get back out, and run to that shrine, but I don't have Dimension Door, so it doesn't make any difference to me. But it's still better to buff outside than to step in. As soon as you step into the fight, it starts. First of all, I'm going to get rid of all this extra trash. That is all the kobolds and stuff. Then I'll focus on the dragon. Here we've got one of these crystals. The reason they're put here is for this. I time it just right. I can use it just on the dragon. Ain't so strong after all. And then that's it. Dragon defeated. Now it's time to loot. Well, you'll notice there's some chests over here that have this field, energy field around them. That's a hint that this quest might be over, but it's not done yet. As far as the quest journal is considered, you're done. You can finish right now. But the story goes on. An elder black dragon. It roars, casting its eyes for its progeny. When the dragon realizes you've slain its monstrous offspring, its wrath shall know no bounds. So 
apparently we've killed the baby dragon. Now the mother dragon shows up and she's pissed. So we're gonna have to go after her and kill her. Again, I always get rid of this trash first. This time it spawns a bunch of skeletons. The game's hinting to you what's about to happen to you. This dragon is completely out of place. As far as I'm considered, it could be a raid. This dragon is way, way harder than the ones in Dragon Ball 4. Doing this on a leap with a group used to be a big chore. And now I'm trying to do it on, well, solo. Full disclosure, when I was recording this video, my intention was, yeah, I'll give it a shot and if it works out, it works out. So you're about to see, well, how much it worked out for what it's worth. I've warned you. The toughest part of this fight is you keep on getting knocked out. Knocked down, and that prevents you from healing up, and also it slows down your DPS, because every time you boost up and you want to you know have a big burst of DPS, get knocked over and half it goes to waste. Yeah, as I was mentioning before, this end fight, if you can make a new character and solo this on normal and defeat both dragons, then you've got a pretty good build. Uh, if you can just get through the whole quest, self-healing and, you know, and having not any problem dealing with the shamans and all the other kobolds and stuff, so your build is pretty good. If you can beat the, the first dragon, I would say that's a solid build and you can give it a shot and if you can get through this dragon also now you, you're on you you struck gold if you can make make a first life character that is a 32 or 28 point build and just solo this on normal you're pretty good you should be you should be fine with everything else the game is going to throw at you yeah i'm doing pretty okay i'm Chipping away at him, I probably could have uh, changed up my stance and stuff. Maybe go to a different monk stance, or perhaps not neglect my items so much before I came into this fight. Make sure to have a good acid resistance and maybe some more MRR, etc. But I'm too invested right now to stop him doing my best. Let's hope I survive. Notice that every time I get knocked over, I make sure to hit block, shift, whatever. Make sure that I don't have to take extra damage while I'm down. Uh, well, I got minus nine. Let's see if I stabilize. Nope. Well, not dead yet. That's because of the ship pops, I think. Actually, this means that as long as I don't die in the next minute, hopefully my self-healing will get me back up again. So now it's just. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Minus 12. <laughs> Come on, this is very close. Self-healing, self-healing. <laughs> Here we go. Back up. Uh, now I need to just heal myself up again. Run, run. <laughs> I honestly feel like this is a little bit a bit above my head. But I'm gonna give it everything I've got.
in general, fighting a dragon in melee isn't ideal. The fact that they can knock you over makes it really, really tough. I remember doing this with a ranged character, it was much easier. Just kiting him around and shooting him from a distance made the whole fight much more manageable. This spending time on the floor every three seconds is really annoying. for a second and my fast healing hit literally a split second after. And I'm just trying to heal up. See this this is just so annoying. I'm using my speed boost to attack and as soon as I started he knocks me over, wasting essentially half of the time that I had. My luck has been holding up pretty good so far, I just hope it holds up until the end of this fight. of my healing charges so I have to rely on using these potions. Also usually in quests I usually do not use stone skin because I don't like the look it gives it turns all of your cosmetics to look exactly the same. So I really I think I really need it. Any extra damage I can negate is really important at this point. Feels like I've stabilized. I think I've got this. Maybe I talk too soon. This dragon might have true seeing, making this displacement completely useless. But I was too too preoccupied to check.
There you go. Done. Well, that was a pretty good experience. Now we get access to the last few chests. These chests have a very small chance of dropping black dragon scales. I can tell you I've seen it like once or twice maybe, but it can happen. Yeah, and that's it. Pretty cool quest. You get to fight some dragons and straightforward, not too complicated. Yeah, and this is my test map. Anyways, this is a scorecard, you get to see it. Well, if you've benefited from this guide or enjoyed this walkthrough, I would appreciate it very much if you would hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Uh, now you might want to check out some of my other videos. I have plenty of solo walkthroughs and guides for many different quests, especially complicated hard quests that seem to be problematic show how to do special methods like how to deal with soloing Zorian Cypher or how to solo the pit and many more so you might want to check them out see you there okay bye